Hallelujah. Welcome again. I'm Minister Sandra. If you can all the way from Hudson, New York, we have a great show today. I know Wednesday is not our normal day, but praise God, we ought to be ready at all time. Amen. In season, out of season. So we have a great guest here, uh, Mrs. Alicia Arnell. I, I introduced her before, and I just want you to just share the link. I net. watch live. Share the link and get all your friends and family to watch this network right now. Go ahead, share the link, ironsharpner.net. This is a website link, and you can see the videos from the link. Mrs. Alicia, welcome to Iron Sharpner today. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Great to have you. Um, please go ahead and just say hello and shout out to my viewers and um just let them know who you are and all that great things hello i am um prophetess talisha arnold i am actually i'm originally from atlanta georgia i'm on assignment here in texas um and i'm just here to share with you about overcoming shame amen okay go and right hello on. to all the viewers Yes, and your family as well. Amen. Um, can you just, your head is a little cut off. Bring your screen. Yes, there you go. So go ahead and jump into your topic. What led you to come out and begin to speak on your experience? What, what led me to come out and speak on my experience was the fact that I've seen so many hurting people, um, men, women, boys, girls that had been through um, being abused or been through several different traumatic experiences, but they were afraid to share. They were ashamed to tell people about it. And I seen that it had them in prison and I had been that person um, at one point in my life. Oh, wow. So tell us from the beginning how it started, what happened. Okay, so how it started was um, when I was a young girl, I um, I had a sister and um, for some reason she was taken away. Well, I was always told that she was taken away because um, she wrote a letter to her mom and the letter we we never knew what the letter said but she was taken away well later in life when i was about 17 um i was i moved out of the home and i was told that um uh, once i went back to see my sister that i hadn't seen for many many years she told me that she had to leave because she was being abused then so i too had experienced what she had been through and so I began to say, so um, like from age nine to 17, I experienced the same thing or probably even worse than what she had experienced. So what really made me come out um, to talk about this even more was the fact that one of my um, sister's friends got in touch with me and she said, I need to talk to you about something um, that's very important. And when she began to talk, um, she too had been abused or, or, or touched inappropriately by the same um, predator. Wow. And how old were you when this started? Age nine. And this was by a family? Yes, it was a family member. And how did you respond to that person? Was it like, um, if you don't say anything, did, was promises made or was fear come upon you? Like if you speak, this is what's gonna happen to you. How well, you well actually it was sort of weird because he never verbally said anything. It was just the, the things like, um, because it was uh, my biological father, um, he would do things like, take the doorknobs off the door or um, say, well, you can't lock your door unless you get a job. So me, 
I go get a job. <laughs> so I went and got a job because I felt like that would give me access to lock my door. And so sometimes when he came in the room, I would like squeeze my legs really tight, you know, try different methods, wiggle um, so that I would get his attention, like to leave me alone. Have you ever thought of running away? Yes, I thought about running away, but honestly, I never really had that many friends. And then the people that I did hang around, I wasn't sure, you know, like even if I ran away and I told what would they do? Because I had already been telling people, but no one believed me because we grew up in the church and my family was considered like this loving nurturing family and on the outside everything looked almost pretty good like it's the perfect family you got a husband you got a wife you got the children they got a job they had you know a place to stay they have a car so it looked like our family had everything together but a lot of people who attended church suffer in silence and i'm gonna just not talk about church members but if if you make your family look bad then you know it's like they're wearing a scarlet letter and they they don't want to wear that scarlet letter that's why a lot of times people sweep things under the rug and it be for years i've been talking to people that's 50 60 70 years old that just now said something about they have been abused wow so how you maintain to focus in school and and then having the courage to tell your mom? Did you go to her and tell her? Well, in school, um, I sort of focused on um, signing up for everything. Anything I could sign up for that would keep me out of the house as much as possible. I was on a basketball. I did after school. I was on the beta club. Whatever I could do that would keep me out of the house. But most times these incidents uh, um, took place in the middle of the night. So either way it go, I was going to have some type of encounter. Um, what I, and then as far as my mom is concerned, I, I never um, directly came out and told her. We ended up at a revival and I invited her to that revival and the pastor that was preaching that day, um, prophet that was ministering that day, pulled me, like called me up and said, you're not crazy. It did happen to you. And my mom just so happened to be at that service. And, you know, from there, it was like a downhill spiral because it was like, oh, you lied. You talked to them before the service. You told them. And I never knew the man. I never knew the man. I, I also had another encounter at a service with um, Brian Corn, and his and one of my mom's friends were there and he pulled me. He said, you're not crazy. And this was in my 30s. You're not crazy. It did happen to you. And God is going to vindicate you because you never lied. And the lady, I didn't even know that she was in the service. She ran over and hugged me so tight and, and just prayed with me. And we cried. And God has been doing a healing to me, like, from day one. I have friends. I have family that pray for me, that look out for me, that um, push me to go forth. And that's what's keeping me going. I mean, your story is so powerful and inspiring. For the fact that you never gave up, you pushed yourself to do great things and continue to take part in everything in school. A lot of people would have break down, but you pressed and you persevere. So why do you think your mom never believed you? Do you think she knew or she was in denial? What do you think? Do you well, honestly, I... I really believe that she was in denial and still have been because several times uh, when the conversation have come up, she stated like, how could I um, choose between you and them? Because I have five brothers and three sisters. So she's like, how could I choose between 
you and them. And I said, well, mom, I'm not asking you to choose. And then when it was brought to her, she stated that, how come you just now telling me about this? Because I didn't ask you to be our savior. And so the thing was, I seen other children go to foster care and homes, but I knew because we had eight children, it was eight children in the house that they were going to split us up. The children that we seen go to foster care, one ended up with a neck brace on their neck. And that was scary to me. And I did not want that to happen to my siblings or myself. So the, the, what you call it, foster care system to me was not an option. I just felt like eventually, you know, it didn't come out until I was like 17. So um, as far as like and to the family, but it was still like, oh, she lying. My, my sister slept in the room with me. So it's like, how could that happen when I was in the room? So your sister was asleep at that time. Yes, she sleeps like a rock. <laughs> it wasn't. It was molestation. It wasn't intercourse. Um. Well, I can't. Like we we have been talking about this, determining the difference intercourse. Like they say, well, well, you know, he, he penetrate. Right. Well, when the person um actually takes out their private parts and rub them down there and that is still intercourse okay. to me like you you did something to violate me to where I did not have the ability to like refuse or say no or make you leave me alone you kept coming back and back and back until I was like age 17 to the point that I was so confused I was even confused about my first son is that my my the one the guy I slept with the one time or is it my father's like it, it's been a roller coaster throughout my life but god has you know kept me through it all he kept my mind he kept my soul because yeah. even in the backslidden condition uh at several times where i backslid i went fornicating looking for love in all the wrong places because of being molested i found out that the Lord was still carrying me through. He was still talking to me. He never left me. He never forsake me, even in the process, even in the process of talking about this. I still today, I love my dad. I love my dad. I love my mom. I just recently had them here with me in Texas. But at the same time, there are other young ladies that have been affected by this and I don't know if their relationship with God is where my relationship is or even stronger but it's hard to maintain a life of secrecy and move and elevate in the things of God or just even in the things of business or entrepreneurship when you have all these weights weighing down on you I agree I so agree and I really feel like where God wants this show to be is to bring on therapists, like professional therapists, counselors at the same time so that they could also give the viewers their healing mechanism. You know what I'm saying? How important it is for the family as a whole to be healed. Because I truly believe that your mom needs to go through a healing process because she's in denial and she's in hurt. And also your dad and yourself for the family to come together, then separate. You know what I mean? So And that would family. really be a blessing. Yeah. That would really be a blessing if the whole entire family get to the place of healing, the place of where we can talk. Because true ministry is like love, love, the characteristics of love, number one, holds no account of wrongdoing. I'm not trying to put you in prison, put you in jail. I just want you to come to the acknowledgement of the truth so that these other young ladies that are attached to my story, they can be healed as well. Exactly. So because we are to empower and sharpen the next generation That's right. so that they will learn and, and get wisdom and educated on what we faced, what we went through, so they will know how to attack it head on. So 
Um, you will be back while I work on all these if therapists and all these people are that are licensed professional to come on as well. So we could have hold a panel of four people on this broadcast because I want those who are benefiting by listening to hear the medical aspect, spiritual, medical, you understand what I mean? Tie in as a whole for healing. So when you try to talk to your dad as an adult now, is he open to talk about it so that he could say, I'm sorry? Have he said, I'm tell you he was sorry? Well, once um, we actually had a conversation, um, my mom and I, and I, um, I explained to her um, because there are other issues within my family dealing with the same um, situation, which makes it a generational curse. And I explained to her the, what a generational curse was. And because it has affected my other siblings, even all the way down to my own son, I explained to her that, you know, that, you know, if he speaks out, it would break. It's like, you know, like that's uh, like the um, one of the princess stories. Like the darkness uncovers the castle when every the spell is broken. And that I feel like he's the head. He's the leader of our family. And once he speaks out, me speaking out is a good thing. But once he speaks out and apologize or say I'm sorry for what I did and the fact that I even recently heard that he experienced some type of abuse when he was a child. And so a lot of times, and yes, we were talking about this yesterday, hurt people hurt people. But even you can be healed through the hurt. You can be healed if you speak out uh, and, and and make the devil be ashamed, and, and you don't have to be ashamed anymore um, because that is an illness. I feel like that's a mental illness if somebody touches or or molest, abuse, or you know do things to people inappropriately, and they can't control it. I'm not saying they can or can't, but you can't control demons unless you bring your body under subjection to um, the, the blood of the lamb, to yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. So what's, how is your relationship with your mom? Is she open to talk to you about it now? Um, I, I believe the last time we spoke was the, um, the end of May, maybe the beginning of June when the when the young lady wrote the book and I told my mom about it. Other than that, there and, and this has happened so many times throughout my life to where I, I'm I've learned to brace myself for the disconnect. Sometimes it's been seven years, three years. I've been without my mom a, a, a long time, you know, even with the fact that, you know, even like she could come around and I could come around her, but it would only be about talking about vitamins, talking about other things, but not talking about this issue, which plagues my family. And your other siblings know about it. Yes, they they are aware of it. They call it an accusation. <laughs> Every one of them said that. Um, I have two that um well now three that does not really call it an accusation. They just um uh, one of them just spoke to me recently and just said they didn't understand why, you know, like my mom didn't investigate more didn't look into it more to see um, if I really was lying or if I was telling the truth. They don't understand that because I'm the daughter and, you know, and she's glued to the husband and she, it's like she can't make any decisions without um, him around or we can't have a relationship. If I try to spend time with her, it's like he, it, you know, occupies that time as well. Like he has to be there 
because it's like, oh, she's going to start talking about the incident. And it's nothing but spirits that uh, that's one thing I want to share with everybody. It's nothing but spirits that you wrestling with. You wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yes, that person may be the person that did the thing to you, but they either oppressed or suppressed by demons that have taken control of their body. Each spirit needs a host. That's and it. if they opened up that door through pornography or that's through it. lust or whatever, it can overtake them because that's what they're spending their time with. That's right. So um, you said it started at age nine and it ends at what age? When, you um, when, when I was um, I was put out, but age 17. Why were you put out? Um they didn't have enough room for me, I guess. I've heard so many stories. I don't really know the truth about that. Well, do you think is that your mom just didn't want to face it anymore? She she felt like you were a threat to her marriage, so you had to leave? Um, honestly, I really, I really can't say. I just felt like I was abandoned. I was rejected. Yeah. And I had to figure out life for the most part on my own. My mother was there in and out of my life. Um, my siblings, uh, one brother in particular, was there in in and out of my life. Um, but for the most part, it's been, you know, the people, we say that, like, um, they, they have a cliche where they talk about blood is family, but it's been those people that have not been blood, or maybe they've been born again with the blood of Jesus, and that has become my family. And I, I, you know how you adopt sisters and brothers and moms and dads, and they have helped me to like keep going. And even today, like it's just a blessing to be on Iron Sharpener and just to be able to share, but just the connection, you know, God's timing is everything. Mm -hmm. And there's a timing and season and a place for everything. And so when we have that opportunity, the Lord saying like, even in this seize the moment, do not be afraid for God has not given you the spirit of fear, mm -hmm. but a power, love and a sound mind. Mm -hmm. And so because God has given me a sound mind, because I meditate on his word, both mm -hmm. day and night, he said, then I will make your way prosperous yeah. and you will have good success. Oh, Rabbi Sata, you made my spirit come alive. I feel like shouting. Thank Lord, you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yeah, Robo Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ah, yes, Thank you, Lord. Father, you said that we don't have to be ashamed. We don't have to be ashamed of the gospel. We don't have to be ashamed of the people that violated us, Father. You said that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So right now, God, we just stop to give you glory and give you praise. Because, Lord, we know that you're making a way out of no way, God. Uh, you said, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, and neither has it entered into the hearts of men what you have prepared for us god hallelujah lord you hit us for a season yes, lord. God. one thing i know for sure this platform is not an ordinary platform whenever it's time to break out in praise that's what we do amen hallelujah amen, jesus because we can't hallelujah be like quiet and all my god we have to break out and shout praise whenever the presence of god and lift up the name of jesus because it's all about you it's not about me it's not about you no but it's a privilege to be used by god he's our hands and our feet where his hands and his feet and our mouthpiece my god but god could have done it by himself but he said i'm going to choose a remnant of people to carry my glory across this earth so I'm just so grateful to be used by God. Thank and you, Lord. Lord. Whatever you want to do, I am sharp to do it. It's your will according to what you want. You pick the guests, you bring them on so that you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, hallelujah. So that I know for sure that you are 
call on this platform by God he chose you glory to God thank you Lord and I'm just so excited because God is going to break out a lot of things by your testimonies today people are going to get healed and delivered once they watch the show my God a lot of hurting women they've been rejected they've been refused abused hallelujah but by watching and connecting and hearing the story they're gonna understand that somebody went through it oh hallelujah and somebody was healed and delivered and the healing belongs to them as well oh hallelujah and there's no need to be ashamed no need to blame self-blame is a is an issue right there because at nine years old you could you, you could have said it's my fault did you get into that thought in your head that it was your fault um no I I never really felt like it was my fault yeah. I I didn't really understand what was going well, on I was really confused because yeah. um even like I said as a child when like my parents would do like family time or we would all sit in the living room because the TV was in that one place and they would talk about like they had a book called life cycle and every time either somebody would kiss on the tv or they would um or they would talk about this book and it would show you different private areas i would run out the room and it was brought up by my mom like he used to run out the room and but i was running out of the room because i never wanted to see that i never want to see body parts or or talk about kissing and, and none of that kind of stuff and and although they didn't understand what was going on because i had not spoken up at that time it was just when you look back she can remember bits and pieces of things like she told me she remember when my dad took the doorknobs off the door and i said mom that wasn't strange to you i will be out of the state tomorrow but my engineer can bring you on and you just flow and bring the word and minister and whatever god wants you to do i will set exactly. it up with him and you could do it tomorrow Thursday and I'll watch it wherever I am, probably on the airplane. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow. God. But I believe it's a divine connection. I believe um that God is doing great things through your connection to the show. Amen. Because it's all for him, is what he wants to do. We just said yes, Lord, we submit to his will. Right. To do. Amen. So you are a part of us now, so you get better get used to that. Uh, <laughs> Praise God. Family. Yes, you're a family of Iron Sharpner. Glory to God. And I'm just so thankful for my brother that he connected me. Um, I'm sure Omar is watching somewhere. Praise the Lord. I want to give a shout out to my brother. Omar, I love him so much. And my Amen. mom and everybody um, for connecting me with your husband, Prophet Gerald. I shout out to him and now to you, right amen so that's how it works so i just want to say thank you again for all your listeners all your viewers for coming on and be a blessing and i thank everybody else for watching the show also for those who'll be watching the show later and tomorrow and many months to come that god will begin to heal them and minister to them in such a great and powerful way and thank you again for tuning in final words before we close um, the only thing I have to say is remember that um, this is your life. This is your story and your testimony. And in order for you to move forward in whatever it is that you feel God is calling for you to do, you have to release the hurt, release the pain, release the shame, release the weight so that you can move forward in the things of God amen glory to god so we celebrate every life on iron sharpener that you are blessed and wonderful and created and orchestrated for god's plan and pur pur purpose and he knows you before you enters your mother's womb the very hairs of your head is numbered and according to jeremiah 29 11 said god has a great plan for your life to give you a good hope and a future an expected amen. end a good hope and a future so god loved you unconditionally and what you've been through it's not the end of your life it's just a stepping stone to your greatness oh glory hallelujah to god. So be encouraged 
be blessed for all the listeners who have been through something you are you have your purpose god wants to use you and just be open to what god wants to do in your life in jesus name thank you so much have a blessed day